All the way back in January, we got our first glimpse of the then named Atari Game Station Plus. My arcade showed it off at CES, and I even did a few speculative videos here talking about the unit itself, what we might expect from it, what it means to the market, and what they could do to improve on that unit based on the information we got at CES. Well, in the interim, I have kept really good contact with my friends over at My Arcade, and many of you in the comments keep asking me, when is this thing coming out? Is there any new news? Well, they did send me this big white box, and while it looks like a sheet cake, that might have been nice, I've gone for a sheet cake right about now, uh, it doesn't have a sheet cake. And when I got it, I said to my friends there at My Arcade, listen, I should not have all the fun. I want to show this to my viewers. I want them to see what's going on. And they're like, nah, I don't think so. I'm like, okay, what if I just show them one thing out of the box? What if I share that? And they, they kind of agreed and went, all right, go for it. So I'm just going to reach in here, and grab something. Let's see what we can find. No, not that, not that. All right, here we go. Now I'm not confirming or denying what else is in the box, but this is the controller for the Atari Game Station Pro that's coming out later this year in a few short weeks. In this video, I'm gonna give you a full tour of it and show you everything I can show you without actually connecting it to a console. We're gonna get going right after this. This video brought to you in part by Tommy in the Order of Cosmic Champions. This exciting and heartwarming coming of age Gen X novel is available now. Check the link for more info. Hey there, welcome back to Gen X Grown Up. I am John and I am a Gen X Grown Up. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. And if you did, I'm pretty sure I know why. It's because you, like so many other people, have been very eager for more official news, updates about the My Arcade Atari Game Station Pro, which was first announced as the Plus all the way back in January. So finally with a little back and forth, we agreed that I could show you the controller for the new GameStation Pro that will be released to retailers in just a few weeks. Now, what we're not gonna do here is plug this into anything or connect it to anything. We're just gonna talk about the controller. So consider this as a preview, kind of an appetizer, if you will, for a full review that I promise is coming before too long. But for now, let's jump in to show you everything that they have done and changes they have made to this controller since January. Let's head to the table. So finally, after months of waiting, here we are, our first close-up, in-depth look at the new 2023... My, what? Oh, yeah, you're right. That's not it. And so here, finally, after months of waiting, is our first close-up and in-depth look at the 2023 My Arcade Atari Game Station Pro controller. Whew, that's a mouthful. Now, my intent here is to give you as much information as I can about this controller, right up to, but not including, connecting it up to a console. So let's start by just talking about the overall feel and build quality. I wanna go into all the ports and all the buttons and all the knobs. We're gonna talk about that. And I would say maybe treat this as a, a precursor or a preview or a companion even to the full video that I eventually will do for the new GameStation Pro. But just at a glance, I mean, we saw this when it first was shown at CES and we saw that it looked cool. Many people said, man, I wish it was Bluetooth so that we connect it to anything. Uh, so what I do know so far is it is still 2.4 gigahertz communication back to the console. So bad news, good news there. The bad news is no, you can't easily just connect this up to any computer or the VCS or whatever. But the good news is that 2.4 gigahertz is an inexpensive way to get low latency communication between the controller and the base unit. So it means that while it might not be portable to use on other devices, it absolutely will have the fastest communication possible for a wireless controller. And while you can plug it in hardwire, my understanding is that that hardwire is just to power it. It still will always communicate wirelessly back to the base unit. Let me quickly knock out some vital statistics. I mean, you can see the size of it in my hand and you saw it at CES, but one thing about a controller is always, how does it feel? How is it flimsy or is it heavy? And it has a nice weight. So I'm gonna go ahead and weigh it here. And it comes out to 9.1 ounces, also known as about 260 grams-ish. So this is with the batteries in it. So without the batteries, it'd be a bit lighter, of course, but it does have a nice heft and feel, which I was quite satisfied the first time I picked it up. Now, a keen-eyed viewer like you has no doubt already noticed that this controller has changed slightly from when it was first shown at CES back in January. There's one most notable change, and we're going to get to that, but let's start by giving you a tour of all of the buttons and I.O. that exist on this little device. 
Now here on the front of the base is a My Arcade logo that's embossed in, and then on the top we have an Atari logo, and thus begins all of the buttons to check out. Right here on the front of the base of both controllers, you have a Home, Select, and Start button. Now remember, this console supports not only Atari 2600, but also 7800 and arcade titles. So it would make sense that Select and Start are Select and Start for the VCS. Uh, home, I uh, don't know, that might be Home. I don't know, just to get back to whatever menu you were on. Uh, it, now it leaves open the question, how do I access things like the color black and white switch and difficulty switches? Uh, don't know yet, we won't know until we're able to power up the unit and see the software, but at least these first few buttons give us an indicator of what they might be up to. I would also expect that for the arcade games we know were included, this would make sense to be a, I guess, a coin in and then a start button. I don't know about two players start or how that's going to work, but definitely these can be versatile. Plenty more business going on around back here. So we have a power on off switch. We have a five volt in. Now you might recall that you could put batteries in this. We'll look at the battery box in a moment, or you can plug it directly in and power it right off the console, or frankly, anywhere you can get USB power and you get power of here if you don't want to put batteries in it. That defeats the wireless functionality, but the option is there. And note this isn't a charging port. This is a power port if you would like to power it externally. Uh, then we have a menu button here that doubles as a light button. We'll get to that when we turn it on in a second. And then we have a connectivity button here. You'll notice when I turn it on, the light goes on and then it's blinking waiting for, I don't know, some other part of what's in that white box, perhaps. We'll have to wait and see. Now here on the bottom, I know this is the most pedestrian of all details I can show you, but it has a battery door here, which you remove by first taking this screw out and then popping this little latch, very much like a lot of the uh, My Arcade units that we've seen recently that have a screw that holds the battery door in place. And it just receives four AA batteries to power it if you don't want to use, again, that external USB-C. All right, so now that I've shown you the menu buttons and the logos and the battery box, what else could be of interest? Oh yeah, the actual controls on this controller. Let's start with these buttons. There are three buttons in various locations. The one that you're gonna press the most right here on the base of the unit is this A button. Now it is a, I think you can see in the light, it is concave, which means it's indented, right? So it's a little bowl that feels really good to tuck your finger right into, easy to find on top of the unit. Uh, and it's a little bit clear, so you can see the, uh, the A right through there using that Atari font, of course. And while this is the most commonly used button for the controller, there are two more of vital importance. The secondary button, the B button, is here on top of the joystick. So to press it, of course, you're going to have to use your thumb or reach around with your finger. I am withholding judgment for how this is going to work in a variety of games, depending on what games you use. Like I can imagine, you know, old Atari games that only need an A button, that's not going to come into play. I could see that for 7800 titles that had a primary and secondary button, that would be great. I imagine, I don't know, throwing a grenade or a smart bomb or something while this is my primary and the B is there. This feels almost identical to the A button. It's just mounted in the top of the joystick. There was some discussion and question about does this stick rotate or anything like that? No, it absolutely does not. It is firmly in place and it wouldn't have made sense because there's a third button here on the back and it's this C button. I think you can see the C on there. Anyway, it's red, but it is a C button. Now, this would be your third or tertiary button, depending on what controls you need for what game you're playing. If you need access to the B and the C buttons, well, you can imagine I'm gonna have to hold the joystick in such a way that my thumb is here and my index finger is here to do that. That's not, I mean, that's how I fly flight simulators. That's not how I play most Atari games. So it's gonna be interesting to see how this is implemented and how it is mapped on a per game basis. Now, we just talked about the fact that this does not rotate and we talked in our video, wouldn't it be nice if there was some kind of a paddle or spinner available on this? Well, a paddle. One of the few things that we talked about back in January that would make this a game changer, would be a system seller for the GameStation Pro Plus Pro, I'll, I still haven't gotten used to calling it Pro, is some sort of a paddle. I suggested, well, if you can't add it to this, make it a standalone. They actually found a way to add it to this device. So check this out. This is not a spinner, this is a paddle. 
It has, you know, the expected 200, 220 degrees of rotation-ish, as you would expect on a paddle. Now, what's gonna be interesting is looking at how the paddle gets implemented and addressed in software. We saw the at games, uh, was the flashback, 10, gold, whatever, Atari thing. And we've had many videos talking about how, while it has a paddle, first you have to unplug and plug in your paddle. It's not always there. This one is always accessible. Plus it's wireless, plus, I mean, it's, it's, it's just, it feels good. I'm so excited for so many reasons. First, the fact that a paddle is here. After there wasn't one, we as a community said we wanted one, and here it is. Secondly, has my arcade taken the opportunity to be second to market and therefore learn from the mistakes that At Games made with their paddle controller? Oh, one can only hope. I guess, and third, the fact that as a company, my arcade was listening to us. We hadn't given them a penny yet. We just said, yeah, we're, we're looking at your toy and we think blah, blah, blah about it. And they were like, oh, blah, 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 really? What if we added blah, blah, blah for you? And blah, blah, blah was a paddle on this controller. Look, I think we should all take that as a very, very good sign about what my arcade, the direction they're going in and how they're thinking that they're looking at this new product and they weren't digging in their heels and going, well, here's what we made. Good luck. They were listening even months ago and saying, hey, community, what is it that you want? That makes me wonder. What have they implemented on the console? You remember that video? I'll put a link to it up here if you don't. I talked about five things that might be great to have on the GSP, which is what I've nicknamed it, the Game Station Pro. That way I don't have to remember Pro or Plus. It's a trick for my, my brain. Anyway, the, we, we looked at that and we said, well, hey, what would be cool? What would be nice to have? They did at least one of them. What else might they have done? What is coming? Oh, there's one thing we know, if true, from the wholesaler, we know they've added 5,200 games. That wasn't in the January release. And so if that's true, what we saw there, that means they've done at least two of the things we asked for. I don't know what more you could ask for out of a publisher, a distributor, a manufacturer than to listen to what people are saying and what they want and try to give them that. Uh, it, it just makes me that much happier to be supporting and working with my arcade, frankly. The last thing I would like to look at and kind of show you here is this ring of light, this LED ring around the stick. And you're probably going, doesn't look like a light up to me. Well, it's off. It's gonna, when we turn it on, you will see it. This was quite divisive among people in the comments back in January. Some people said that looks really cool. Some people said, I wish you could turn it off. It's distracting or, or looks chintzy or cheesy. I don't know, it's up to you. But let's see what they've done with this and how it looks in person. So let's flip it on. And so here is that ring of light in action, constantly changing. It looks like there's four regions or quadrants, if you will, <laughs> around here. And each one of them seems to be changing individually. You can see this is cycling blue, green, orange, purple, blue. Yeah, it's all the colors of the LED rainbow here. Now, if you like that, you're set. If you don't like that, you do have some options. Now you'll likely remember earlier when I showed you this menu button on the back of the base, the, it also serves double duty as a light button and it does in fact affect those LED lights. By holding that button down, you can change from different modes of this ring of light. So let's hold it down the first time and it switches to just a plain white, or you might say that's kind of like a, a bluish white, but it's it's white you would get from an LED, of course. I'll hold it down again, it's a much more subdued color, kind of this amber color almost. Good for low light situations, doesn't cast a lot of light, doesn't do cycling or anything. Now, if you're hoping you could turn that off entirely, sorry, no off, the third cycling, we'll take it around to the rainbow again. So you have three options. This is always the default, but you can change it. Now I can tell you that in my experience so far with this controller, I have not had the desire to change the behavior of this ring of light. Like you, I also wondered, would it be distracting? But it wasn't, frankly. Look, if you're looking at the controller, you're not playing the game right. You need to pay attention to what's going on on screen. And at no point did I go, man, this light is distracting or it's in my way. It was just like this added bonus, this gravy on top of the delicious meal that just makes it look a little bit cooler. And again, if you don't like it, you can cycle to one of those more boring, or I would say probably less distracting if you find it to be something that draws your eye away from the screen. You have options. The very last thing I want to talk about here, and I won't spend a lot of time on it because it's super subjective and it's difficult to convey via video, and that's the feeling in hand. How does the controller feel? And look, I can't make that judgment for you. You have to decide what a controller feels like to you. I can only share with you my experiences so far in terms of playing with this device. And what I can tell you is we talked about weight already. It feels 
It feels premium in the in the hand. It has some weight. It doesn't feel, you know, you get electronics that are like light and flimsy. This is not that. It feels like a nice piece of electronics. These beveled edges are really nice on the hand. There's no sharp edge to kind of poke on you or anything. The controller kind of goes away. The only time that I am finding that I even bother thinking about the controller is if I need to get access to one of these buttons that aren't in a standard location for my brain. Otherwise, in my experience playing with this, the controller just kind of melts away and it does its job. Totally in my experience, it just felt fine. Now that fine is not a negative term. What I'm saying is at no point did I go, ah, oh, this controller. It was just me going, oh, this works great, which frankly is exactly what you want out of a controller like this when you're gonna play some vintage games. Plus, doesn't hurt, looks pretty nice too. So, what do you think? What do you think of this little controller? Is it what you thought it would be? Is it more? Is it less? How does knowing what the controller is like impact your decision for buying the GameStation Pro? Or maybe you're just waiting on the full review of the unit, which makes perfect sense. Let me know what you think of the controller in the comments. And additionally, let me know if you have specific questions about the GameStation Pro so that I can use your comments to help me inform what I cover when I do my full review in an indeterminate amount of time that's not too long from right now, I promise. <laughs> In the meantime, I'll have a lot more coverage of my arcade and the GameStation Pro and more. I'll throw links over my shoulders here and here to all of those videos. I certainly hope you found something to enjoy though in this video, and I cannot wait to talk to you again next time. Bye-bye.